All right, so little by little it's coming together. We have the legs animated and cycling and they track. We have some nice squish and twist on the body and the head's got some action happening too. So uh, let's do the arms next. So there's the arm. And um, oh boy, let me isolate the arm here. And it's been a while since we've touched this, but it looks like the arm never had been set up for pivot, right? The arm is not gonna swing around its pivot point. So let's fix that right away. And let's go into the symbol and see, yeah, we don't have, we need this to be 25 frames. And how's the pivot on these? That one looks good. The pivot on that one, oops, the pivot on that one's not set either. So yeah, we make sure that we're all, do our little, make sure we're prepped and ready to animate before we get into it. Because uh, once you animate and set keys, and if you have to go back and fix it, you basically have to take all the keys out, keying the pivot point and all that stuff. All right, so now we're good. Uh, so we're getting some that's set up to bend, and then this now is going to bend. Okay, cool. So let's just put the arm swing in here. So I have the arm set up to animate. Uh, it's, all I need to see is just the uh, same leg, and um, we can animate these things. To, to I just want to do the swing, and then I'll worry about the position later. So. Uh, Whenever you're doing a walk or a run, it's it's a natural thing to have your the same side of your body, the arm and the leg will swing in opposition to each other. Meaning, uh, if your if your leg is forward, the arm is going to be back. It's a natural counterbalancing. It's very unnatural to walk. Try walking with your hands swinging forward when you put your foot down, or try running with uh, pump, you know pumping your arms so that your arm swings forward with the same leg. It's it's a really unnatural way to run, and it's probably going to make you not run very fast. So uh, natural counterbalancing action there. So this will be my initial position there. And then frame 13, we'll key that and then swing it forward. And we can very quickly just check our loop and see how does it, does it seem like it's got some rhythm to it, some swing. It's really super stiff, but at least it's swinging in opposition. So we got to bend the elbow and uh, I know from the entire time we've been working on this that 1 and 25 are the extreme positions, um, in this case back, and 13 will be extreme forward. So I can drill down into this and I can say, well, 1 is all the way back. And I can even give myself a little hyperextension just to have some flexibility on that. Same thing there. And on 13, it's going to be forward, maybe like that much. And I can classic between these and I can back up and see how it plays and it's bending but it doesn't feel like it's flexible it feels like it's it doesn't feel like there's any kind of what would you say lag or momentum or like a pendulum swing it feels kind of like it's 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 very rigid and stiff and because you know the same thing there's no follow-through or overlapping action it's just sort of in perfect synchronization and there's like as the arm swings forward, this paw should lag behind a little bit. So one way to address that is I can just go into my symbol and I can take my timing and just offset it so that it is like, the, no, let's say like four there, three frames ahead. Let's put it on frame four, bump it up one. And now I can just say, okay, well, this is, whoops. I'll we'll lock that there. This is my new frame one, and uh, this can just back up to here. And this is just preserving the swing. So actually, this can be taken. Well, we'll leave it in for now. We can take all these out. So this just reminds me that this is my actual cycle period, and then from here, it actually now pushes this out. My frame one is actually now like pushed out to here, but it's going to loop around. So we'll just do that for now. Let's see how that looks. Let's put on a 24 frame cycle too in there. So you can see, you can sense a little bit of that lag happening, just a little bit. And then on that side too, so that actually works pretty well. If you, if you, if you look at it slow, it might be a little quick to catch up here. Maybe like around frame, maybe like around frame nine, I still want it to be kind of at the center. So let's go ahead and find that. 
and just say, you know what, let's just exaggerate that lag a little bit like that and bring it in here. Let's see, how's that look? Is that, I don't know, overthink. That's pretty good. It feels more like a pendulum. Let's just isolate that. So that that's a way to give us, it feels like there's some more flexibility in there and like there's some momentum happening. In animation terminology, it's called uh, breaking the joint. And uh, I'm not breaking in that it's a hyperextending and snapping your ligament, you know, breaking your arm joint. It's it's breaking the direction of the motion. So what, what I mean is there's two things happening here. You've got, let me get a note layer here if I can. So you have, at one point you have a very slightly exaggerated arm going this way, and then at another point you have the arm going this way. So if, you're, if your parent axis of your upper arm is kind of slicing through here, right? you have the child, the uh, elbow, the forearm is on this side of the axis, and then same thing, it swings through on this side of, the, on this side of it. And it's happening as the arm's swinging, so you're changing the direction. And if your direction is uh, if the direction is counter to the direction it's swinging, you, it's, it's changing the direction that's, that's, that's where the joint is breaking its position. So as we swing forward, we're swinging back here. We're at the tail and swinging back, and we have a counter. You know, the direction of the parent and the arm swinging is this way, and then the uh, aim or the heading and the direction of the child is counter to that swinging the other way. Your joint's breaking that way. It's breaking in the opposite direction. Whoop, too many. Too many things deleted. And then, when we swing this way, the opposite's happening, right? We're always, we're always introducing counter positions and contrasts, right? So whenever now the forearm swings this way, we want the direction or the heading of the child to swing the other direction to counter it, to introduce some contrast, right? So that's why the joint is breaking the other direction, and we're just constantly doing that. And then also there's momentum, so the hand's gonna swing up again because it's it's got some, there's a muscle on there that's making it move also, right? And he's, he's intentionally swinging his arm as well and bending his elbow. But that, that gives you a little bit of flexibility. If you had, you know, if the, if the wrist continued on and there was another symbol nested in that with a different whole different paw or a hand or something, you could get a third one, two, three joints breaking in different directions and get a whole lot of flexibility. And, you know, if you have like a, things going down the line, like a chain swinging, right? And it would just, chains are made up of rigid joints, basically, that all just move in a, in a wave pattern by just the momentum and the lag happening. So that works pretty well. Now let's just attach that to the vest and see how that looks. So I am going to turn on the body I'm gonna make the arm outline. And I wanna position this kind of in smack in the middle of that. And I can just eyeball that one. So let me go and find the arm. Let's lock everything just so that I'm extra sure I'm not gonna mess anything else up. And I'm just gonna position this, just probably nudge it around until it looks good. So there. And I'm going to start with where it is on all the keyframes for starters. And then if I need to introduce any more breakdowns, I will. And I probably will have to. But I, I want to try to be as economical and, and lean in my use of keyframes as possible. Just because I don't want to, uh, I'd rather not. Anytime you introduce keyframes, you're, you're introducing you know, more, you're changing position. And you can introduce, inadvertently introduce things like lag, uh, not lag, but jitter and, and like jumpiness and stuff. So it's almost following. I have a probably a breakdown position where it's not happening, maybe here. Yep. All right, so let's just put that in place. And maybe that's all it needed. It's like there's another place where it needs help. There. Oh, that's why, because there's not a break down there. Okay. Is this moving on? This is where it gets tricky, because if we if we were to trace the, let's see what happens. If, if it was possible, let's see if we can do it. it. 
Turn on onion skin, will that work? I don't think it will work. Well, it will not, because it's not tracing. I want What I wanted to track was, if we could do a time lapse of this ball moving left and right, uh, this armhole kind of moving left and right while the body's moving up and down, it would, it would trace probably like a figure eight or an arc shape. And the arm itself, we can track that through space here on the, on the stage. We go back and we look at the arm and we look at what, that's not on an arc. Let me make this uh, outline, that's where it is now, all right. Sure, let's do that. So if, if we look at this, it's not moving on arcs at all. It's moving in straight lines, which is uh, not terribly appealing in terms of animation. It's angular. Um, it'd be nice to have that actually moving on an arc because generally when you have joints moving there, you have a lot of rotational joints and they're going to end up making things move in arcs. But we, we, we're not going to put this on an arc for now. But the reason why I'm not putting on an arc is you can kind of get away with it in this case. I mean, I could go back in here and put in more breakdowns and put them on arcs. It's not going to really be, uh, be that time consuming. And if, you know, if you really want your stuff to look great, you probably should do that. But I, um, I'm intentionally not going to do that just to prove that if you have enough moving and any pros out there are probably face palming right now. Um, if you've got enough moving, and there's a lot to look at. There's a lot to take in here. Maybe even more later on. And am I going to notice that that arm's not moving on an arc? Probably not so much. Uh, it would be great if it tracked perfectly and I could take the time to do it, but you know that might be like a final polish pass kind of a thing. And uh, I want to, you know, because I might I might go back and do something later on and be like, oh, geez, you know, I need to actually reposition these keys. And then you'd have to find where the actual extreme positions are. And if you put this on an arc, you'll you'll have to keyframe every single position here and then you have to find out okay I gotta take those all out so that's why you, know, you put things on arcs you can save it for the final time you're gonna touch that asset I guess you could say right, that works for me though and what I could do now is I could uh, do the same thing I did for the leg I can take this far arm composition and I can remove this animation from it and I can duplicate this whole thing. Alt drag it down and then say, okay, well, we're gonna offset it in time. This is gonna be here, and then we're gonna take this frame and let's do this. We'll just alt drag it back to duplicate it, and we'll just get rid of this. And then we have a little bit of work to do on this one. We'll make it visible, first of all, and we're gonna isolate it, solo it out. And so we wanna tint it down like the other one so we'll just do this and go to brightness and knock it back and then we need to check the position and this one is i don't have i never drew the other side of that vest you know, this is not it right obviously that's not tracking with where the body would be so i just have to kind of fake it or i guess want to eyeball it and just kind of based on where the near arm is I can sort of figure out where the far arm should be. So I think my height is okay. It's just the overall uh, left-right position is not so great. Um, it needs to be, the front needs to be further front. Maybe I can just take the whole thing and move it over. I don't know. Let's try that. So I can just turn on all frames like I just did for the hand and just nudge the whole thing forward and uh, that's gonna work for me or not I guess it does I guess I can live with that all right oh and I think I just I just nudged everything over didn't I sure did okay let's lock the near arm and only nudge the far arm and see if that works Okay, 
Still good with that. All right, so let's turn on the body. I'm still good with that. All right, great. So there it is. There's a full-on walk without any extra accoutrements, we can say. Oh, his tail's not in there. Let's put his tail in there. So I have some layer issues also. The forearm should be behind everything there. So he's, he's got a pretty good walk. I, I can go in here and take out all these guides now. And unlock the upper leg and we'll guide out the guide layer. Is that what that was? That's just notes. Here. Guide that out. Do the lower. Guide that out again. And now, uh, since these are all instances on this guy, yeah, since they're all instances of the same then we'll that kind of cleaned it all up. So now we got got a pretty good walk. So let's let's go on to do the tail. Whoa, we got a big big jump in there. Where'd that happen? How'd that happen? That's that shouldn't be. What's happening with you, near arm? Did I animate, I think what I did was I animated the pivot point by accident somehow. Did I do that? That's what it looks like. Sure did. I don't know how that happened, but that big mistake. Okay, I'll just take, you know what I'll do? I'll take this. I'll watch out for that stuff. Okay, problem averted. That was almost a disaster. Okay, so let's turn this stuff back on again. There we go. Whew. All right, so do the tail. Do the tail next.